Welcome to the Diversity Scholarship Foundation's Profiles in the Law. I am your host, Justice Jesse Reyes, and current president of the Diversity Scholarship Foundation. As we've stated in the past, you know, this is a series of conversations that we are having with prominent members of the legal profession. And we are very honored today to have one of the most distinguished lawyers in the city of Chicago, a bar leader and a community activist, uh, Mr. Ray Koenig. Ray, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Justice Reyes. Yeah. Thank you. A pleasure. Uh, so uh, before we get into some of your current accomplishments and things that you've done, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, about yourself. You're not a, a native Chicagoan, correct? I am not. I, I call myself a Chicagoan, though, because I moved here in 1996, and I've, I've not lived anywhere than the city of Chicago since then. So I moved here when I was... 21 for law school, just told everyone my age. Uh, I moved here, I was 21 for law school from Michigan. Uh, I grew up in a suburb of Detroit, went to Michigan State for undergrad, and uh, I visited Chicago a number of times in college and absolutely loved it. And so when I was offered uh, admission to DePaul's law school and then offered a, a little bit of money to go there, it was a pretty easy decision to choose to, to come to Chicago. And I remember I, I always told my mom, who was back in the Detroit area at the time, that I'd be back. and. After she visited me the first time in Chicago, she knew I wasn't moving back to Detroit. No, no shame well, to Detroit. I love Detroit. But. Well, welcome to Chicago. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Um, so what motivated you to want to become a lawyer? Uh, it's really interesting. It's, uh, public service is a big thing in my family, and um, I, and that's kind of what I think drove me. It's also I'm a, I'm a history dork. I love history, and law is really just the application of history. Um, as you know, because mm -hmm. you're one of those people that writes the history that we apply. Uh, so uh, I, so those two things together always drew me, and I've always been very involved in politics. Uh, but an interesting thing is that I went to college. I went to Michigan State specifically to be a high school teacher. And then um, as I got my bachelor's degree and I was supposed to do a fifth year of the student uh, internship uh, program, I decided I needed, I wanted to try law school. Mm -hmm. I was kind of naive. I thought, oh, well, if I don't like the law thing, I can go back and be a teacher, not realizing that today's, <laughs> unless you come from a family of means, and I didn't, you're, you're going to be a lawyer for a long time to pay off your student loans. Right. So you couldn't go back to teaching. Yeah. Uh, but fortunately, uh, I, I fell in love with being a lawyer. And uh, interestingly, I find there's a lot of parallels uh, because I, I, when I first started trying cases, I... I Law school does a wonderful thing, but you don't really know how to be a lawyer until you are a lawyer. Right. And uh, when I first started trying cases, I didn't know how to really organize my case uh, for trial. So I just started treating it like it was a, a every every witness was like a, a lesson plan, and the case was like a unit plan. Oh, and, nice. and, and my students were the judge, was the judge. Was the judge. Yeah. Oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah that's very good. Um, so was there any particular emphasis uh, in any area in history that you uh, liked more than others? Uh, no, honestly, I, uh, I, I, I am all over the place with history. I'm, I'm a sucker for documentaries. I'm a sucker for uh, historical books. Uh, I took, when I was an undergrad, uh, I took a, a year of uh, African-American studies, African-American history, and I absolutely loved that. That was like the, really fascinating because it was, it's part of American history that, that at least when I was growing up wasn't taught in most schools. Right. Um, and going to college, it was so eye-opening and, and learning you know, basically the history of African-Americans since the United States was founded and forward it was just amazing. Another one, oddly enough, that I that I also took that I really liked was <laughs> uh, Imperial Japanese history. Really? Yeah. That was like really fascinating too because it was such a different world and the way they organized their society was so uh -huh. different than we than right. we did in the Western set world. Right. And that was a really, that was great. That's one of the great things about college. Yeah. They learn not everything's like Midwestern America, you know? That's right. It was That's great. right. Now, have you ever had the opportunity to go to Japan? No. Oh, well, the airport. I went to Narita once oh. on a layover. Twice on <laughs> a layover. No, I, it's, it's on my bucket list to go. I've been to uh, Thailand and Taiwan in Asia, but I've never been to uh, uh, Japan. Have you? Okay. No, no, I haven't. I'd love it's to on go. my bucket list. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I like eating Japanese food, if that counts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, I don't blame you. I want it, too. <laughs> yeah. um, so then after law school, uh, what, what, what did you pursue? So yeah, I stayed here in Chicago, and I was very fortunate in that um, the the job that I got my second year in law school, a part time job, was at a small firm. I thought I'd be interested in estate planning because I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, I, I did it with a firm for like maybe a week or two, and mm -hmm. I most certainly did not like estate planning because okay. it just wasn't for me. However, a big chunk of what that firm did, also did was estate trust and guardianship litigation. Okay, and I loved that. 
I was yeah. shocked that I really liked it because I was, I was kind of afraid to go into litigation because it can be a scary prospect if you've never done it. Yeah. Um, and it turns out that I loved it. And so I, I actually stayed with that firm through my third year as a, a trust and estate litigator. And then I stayed with that firm for the first 10 years of my career. And then I left and then I, I helped found the trust and estate litigation practice at Clark Hill in, the, in mm-hmm. Chicago. Okay. So I've been there the last... 15 years. Okay. Well, you know, and uh, they, uh, you've done a great job at Clark Hill. I mean, you've had, held a variety of different positions at Clark Hill, and when you were managing partner, mm-hmm. uh, I believe it uh, kind of grew a little bit, right? Under yeah. Leadership? Yeah, it did. Thank you. So I, well, the Chicago, Clark Hill is a firm of like 750 attorneys around the country in Ireland and Mexico City. Um, and the Chicago office, when I started, was a couple, I was probably two or three years old. Um, and we had maybe, I was like the 12th or 13th attorney. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I was named member in charge is the term that we use of the Chicago office a couple years after that. And by the time I stepped down 12 years later, we had over 90 attorneys. Uh-huh. So uh, we, we, we grew a lot. And now our Chicago office is, I believe, the largest in, in the firm mm-hmm. by headcount, by attorney headcount. So how did how did you uh, develop this growth? And it's, I mean, and it's diverse too. We should point that out. Yeah, we we really focus on on, on bringing in a diverse array of folks um, in in every sense of the term diversity, from all walks of life, everything from obviously race and ethnicity and sexual orientation and mm-hmm. all that, the traditional ways of thinking about it. Sure. But also, you know, different economic backgrounds and different regions. We want people. I love to get people together to solve problems together mm-hmm. from different backgrounds because it, it's. That will, it's it's true, you know. But the more diverse the, the thinkers, the, the better the outcome, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, how we did it was we just we there was this tight knit group of, of partners that got together and just really thought a lot about who we were and who we wanted to be and how we what we needed to better serve our clients. And so we just became really intentional and strategic about getting out there in the legal community and identifying good recruits and good candidates and then bringing them in. Um, and I, I'm very proud that we've had that primary core group of partners is still there, you know, mm-hmm. all these years later. And then we've, we've grown it to, to there's a, we have a, a track record of people staying for a long time. And we've also got a fair number of people if they are like, oh, I'm going to go, so the grass might be a little greener, then they come back. Mm-hmm. So that's always the best when like a colleague, if they leave when they come back, because they, yeah. they figure out our culture is better. Well, you know, kudos to you and to the firm because uh, you're now one of the prominent firms in the city of Chicago and the state of Illinois, and then that did not come easy. So, you know, congratulations on your hard work. Thank you. Yeah. So um, you said you do a little probate, you do a little estate planning. I do no estate planning. No We're, estate planning. No, no, no planning. No, 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 all no, no, no. probate trust litigation. Okay. I, I, I do not. I don't. I have I have estate planning partners, and they're amazing. Yes. I, I I'm pretty sure I'd commit malpractice if I drafted a will or a trust. <laughs> I can litigate them and tell you what's wrong with them. Right. It's better to tell you what's wrong than do yeah. it yourself, right? So what's a common mistake or a common error that maybe somebody does in the probate area that maybe they should know about? Uh, I mean, what lawyers do or no, just well, people? Just general people. Uh, I know it's, uh, well, I mean, something that, that you see a lot more than uh, that's always sad to see is um, while, while individuals can draft their own wills and can draft their own powers of attorney, um, if you use the uh, power of attorney, meaning a document where somebody names somebody to act as agent for them in right. the event they, they can't do it themselves, we have in Illinois, we have these great statutory short forms that are they're drafted in such a way that an individual can do it without an attorney. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's great. If you follow the form exactly, follow the instructions, fine. You don't need an attorney to do that. But if you want to get a little more complicated, if your assets are more complicated, if you have a closely held business, you really need to hire an attorney to do it. And then with wills, I see so many people downloading these wills that you know hundred dollars for a will online and then you fill it out themselves and then they don't execute it properly so it's insufficient so they end up dying in test state they don't have a will because right. it's not a valid will that's where i see a lot of problems when it comes to individuals and this isn't just to plug the legal profession and go out and get an attorney mm-hmm. this is really for individual like consumers and clients is if 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 it sounds too good to be true it is and that's how i feel about these kind of plug and play wills that you get online. Is, sure. And then sometimes they're properly executed, but they don't do what you want them to do. Mm-hmm. Or you put things in there that are void as against public policy, which we see at the appellate level, you know, things, sure. right. things like, if they get married by the time they're doing this, and if they marry a good Polish boy, right. you know, then they get that. You, you can't do that. You know, right. You're not allowed right. to do that anymore. Yeah. For good reason. Right. But, right. but I, you still see stuff like that. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it's, and you're right. I mean, uh, um, you know, because what we're talking about is something that's important to individuals, important to their legacy, to their families, 
um, you know, for not just one generation, for many generations. Yeah. Yeah. So in order to do it the right way, you know, the best way would be to at least consult the lawyer and you yeah. know have it done the way you would want it to happen. Yeah, make sure that your intent is honored and right. actually in the document. Right. And in the long run, the the investment up front to have an attorney do it is so much less than the cost to hire somebody like me in the back end yeah. to try to fix it or right. to mitigate over it. Or right. it's just it's it's that being said, keep making mistakes and keep me in business. I'm okay <laughs> with that, you know. Yeah. So uh Aside of the law firm, you're very active in the community. You're very active in the Bar Association. Mm -hmm. In fact, you just recently served a term as uh, president of the Chicago Bar Association, and you had a very successful year. Thank you. Uh, so uh, could you tell our, our viewers a little bit about, you know, why is it important to get involved in bar associations, and also you happen to be the president during the 150th anniversary of the association? Yeah, so I, I for lawyers uh, in particular, uh, getting involved in a bar association, any bar association, but obviously the Chicago Bar is near and dear to my heart, mm -hmm. is incredibly important for lawyers. It's it's for one, it's it's where you can get uh, you can just learn, you get actual formal legal education. That's mm -hmm. kind of the one everybody thinks of. The other ones I find, and it's been the most valuable for me, is the informal legal education. Being able to, you know, I wouldn't know you as well if right. I hadn't been involved in the bar. I wouldn't know our friend, our mutual friend Adam Zevlin, we were talking about before, if they had been involved right. in the bar. So I think that's that's it, that you get that and you learn from people. I learn from you. you. Hopefully you learn a little bit from me. Just from interacting, you learn about these things. And that's really important. And then you also develop formal and informal mentors through the Bar Association. And importantly for young lawyers, especially when you're trying to build a practice or build a career, being involved in the Bar Association is where you meet people that can help you do that. Sure. I, I can say without equivocation, uh, my career has been much more successful and satisfying because of the bar associations I've been involved in. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had the network and the contacts that I have now, but for the Chicago Bar, but for the Lesbian and Gay Bar Association, but for the Illinois State Bar. All those things have been really key to me succeeding because I met the people that uh, I needed to meet, but also what I find is people that are really attracted to bar associations are the people that want to help. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm the guy that probably says yes way too much, more than I should, but that's one of the things that attracts me to the bar. I get to, I get to meet the younger attorneys and they, they're like, can we get together and have a coffee? Can we talk about this? Can we talk about sure. that? And I'm, I'm always, yes, I'll, I'll help. People help me on the way up. I'm going to help them. But that's how you meet people. I don't know, I don't know how you meet people otherwise in the legal profession if it's not through the bar. Right. Well, and, and you're right. I mean, sometimes, you know, we're so focused on doing what we're, our tasks or our, our duties or responsibilities are that we need something like the bar associations to help us to get out. Yeah. And, and to meet other people, but also, you know, as the Chicago Bar Association and many bar associations in, in Illinois, and we're very fortunate in this regard, is, you know, they go out into the community. They mm -hmm. try to help out uh, individuals yeah. who are not lawyers. Yeah, I was going to say that's another thing that the, the two other, one, a couple other things that we do that are very important. One is we serve as a resource to the legal community or to the, the, the community at large. Right. So when, when somebody may be watching this and they, they've never needed a lawyer, all of a sudden they do. You can call the Chicago Bar Association and we give you a list of referrals or we'll give you people you can go see. And we can help you narrow down the type of lawyer you need right. so that you're not just kind of going through the proverbial phone book and, well, right. that sounds like a nice name and, and not knowing what they do. Right. This way we can help you figure that out. And we also, importantly, we advocate for laws that benefit um, our clients in the community at large. Right. We want we want laws that are well written, that are clear. We want laws that never get litigated and put you out of a job, so that never goes up to the appellate court. That's fine. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Um, so I don't know if my law clerks would be too happy. About that. <laughs> but but we want we we try to get it. We get very involved with the general assembly in Springfield, sure. so that we can not to say this is a good policy or bad policy. Uh, it's more that this law is not workable as written or it conflicts with this or if you're going to do that then what are you going to do about this case that exists that may conflict with that statute but mm -hmm. the statute doesn't necessarily directly address it or you know kind of overrule it right um so we try to do that and that's for the benefit of of the public sure and, and one other thing i like to point out and it's a little sort of self-serving but you know, you also help out various other organizations like the Diversity Scholarship yeah. Foundation, very supportive, you know, of our efforts in terms of trying to diversify the uh, the profession. And so, you know, I want to say thank you very much for doing that. Absolutely. You're welcome. And, and, and during my year as president, and most presidents kind of have a theme or a focus, and my focus was inclusion. Uh, and part of that is because I'm the I was the first openly gay president of the Chicago Bar Association in our 150 year history, um, and I thought it was very important 
to for the organization to be as inclusive as possible um, in all aspects internally and externally mm -hmm. and we did that in, in many ways we did a top-down review of all of our, our committee leaders um, and as we were reappointing people and reappointing, we went through and as much as possible tried to make the leadership as diverse as possible. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily know everybody that you're, that you're appointing or you don't right. know who they are in their background, but you get a sense from talking to other people. So we did it, we did that and that was really cool. But some of the other things that I got to do during the 150th year were amazing. Uh, because it's, you know, we're as old as the Chicago Public Library, yeah. which is crazy because that's such an institution in Chicago and, and we are as well. Um, and uh, we, uh, I got to ring the bell at the Chicago Board of Exchange, the first opening bell. That was a lot of fun. I got to throw the first pitch at a White Sox game. And, and you still have a, a perfect score in terms of I do, pitch, I right? do. I'm, I'm one and oh, unlike the White Sox. Uh, <laughs> I do not. And then I also got to throw out a, 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 the first pitch at a Cubs game. And as a Northsider and Cubs fan, uh, that was incredibly nerve wracking. Uh, I, that was the first game I pitched at. It was a beautiful sunny day and it was packed. Um, and I also threw it out, threw out the first pitch. They have a couple people that do it. Mm -hmm. It was right after um, Angel Reese and, oh my gosh, I'm blanking. I'm forgetting the woman's name, Cardoz, Cardozo. Uh, the, other, the other WNBA uh, uh, oh, basketball, uh, the right. star. Uh, I can't remember her name. The two rookies this year. Yeah. They threw it out right before me. I'm like, wow. Now I have to go. I had to go stand in them. But I threw it from the mound and I got it over the plate. So that's all that mattered to me. Well, you know, uh, the Sox are in a transition period. So well, you can call it that. Yeah, yeah. So you know, they might be coming and calling you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I did. I so my pitch at at, at, at the guaranteed rate field. The guy that uh, was the catcher for me, he was actually a player. He's a pitcher. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when I when I pitched it, he actually told me afterwards it was a strike. And then he clarified really quickly, it was a very hittable strike, but it was a strike because <laughs> it was it was over the plate. It was in yeah. the box. It was over the left back corner. And he's like, that's but it was he's a very hittable because it was yeah. kind of it didn't look like a softball pitch, but it wasn't it wasn't very fast. Yeah, at least you got it over to the plate. Right? I got it over the plate. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, also I just want to point out that you know you're very committed to education within our field as well because you're very involved with the uh, Illinois Continuing Legal Education. Yeah. Um, so if you talk a little bit about that and the importance of that. Yeah, so it's the Illinois Institute for Continuing Legal Education. Uh, the acronym is ICL, um, and it's what ICL does. It's it's a nonprofit organization that provides legal education to lawyers across the state of Illinois, um, which the Chicago Bar does, the Illinois State Bar does, most different organizations do. Uh, with this one, uh, very committed to um, all the way across the state, and also really, it's got some really big um, kind of annual seminars that are or day long, two day long seminars that mm -hmm. people look forward to all year. Like their um, estate planning one is massive and it's been happening for I don't know how many decades. Um, but I've been on the, the board uh, there for, I think I'm on my second term. So maybe mm -hmm. three or four years now. Um, and it's really valuable. Uh, it's the, the board is fantastic. It's a great group of people, the leadership that they're really committed to, to, to delivering high quality legal education. And it shows with the attendance that we get at events. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing I think our viewers should realize is that pursuant to the Supreme Court rules, you know, we have to take a certain number of hours of, of legal mm -hmm. education to make sure that we're up on current events, mm -hmm. but then also that we stay current within our profession in terms of our area of practice. Yeah. And I got to say, Illinois is one of the more stringent states in the country when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said before, my firm has we have 700 plus attorneys and I co-lead our firm's global litigation practice group. So that's over 200 attorneys uh, across the United States and other places, but in the U.S., I think Illinois, at least where we're in our on our footprint, which is twenty six offices or twenty seven offices, Illinois might be might have the highest number of credit hours required. Really, uh, I could be that's wrong, but it's pretty like some of our states have none. Really, there's zero. Wow. Yeah, like that that, that state that, that may or not be shaped like a mitten. Right. They don't have <laughs> they don't they don't have any requirements. Uh, but you know, very good attorneys there. They just right. don't. So it's so that, and that's one of those things that that's actually for the benefit of. The people we serve, the, sure. the public. Yes, it's to make sure that we know what we're doing. Right, um, and it's also I love that. Sorry to keep going, but I love no, that. No, 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 no. I love that the Supreme Court added in there the professional responsibility credits, which are are um, usually uh, it's either going to be what mental health focused or substance right. abuse focused. Substance abuse, yes. I think those, are, and so those are always those are always really good because the yeah or, or ethics, just straight up ethics. Yeah, which I'm, I'm happy that we have those because all those things are issues in our field that we used to ignore. Right. 
And, you know, also so our viewers may know as well is that, you know, judges also have to attend conferences, uh, education conferences for judges, which is a requirement also by our uh, Illinois. Don't you guys call it judges school? Judges school, yes. Yeah, going to judges school, which is hilarious. We have to bring an apple. Yeah, yeah, when you're at the courthouse and like half the judges are gone because they're 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 out in the suburbs for the week at judge right. school. Judge school, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and you also mentioned that you were the uh, uh, the first openly gay uh, president of the Chicago Bar Association. Um, so you're very involved in in the community. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I could talk for days about that, but I've been um, ever since I. I Shortly after law school, I came out and started living my kind of authentic, honest life as who I am. Uh, and then ever since then, it's just I've been really involved in politics and I was very involved in, in helping Illinois get marriage equality, both uh, through the legislature and then later, th well, and then later the Supreme Court, the United States Supreme Court that recognized the right to marry. Um, and I've just been really involved in getting LGBTQ folks elected mm -hmm. um, and our allies elected, because I don't think you have to be LGBTQ to be our biggest ally. Some of our biggest allies weren't. Right. Um, and then I, I'm also somebody that I'm a mentor through the Lesbian and Gay Bar Association. Um, the people that I say yes to all the time to get a coffee or a drink are the young gay attorneys. Um, young by gay, I mean LGBTQ, not just mm -hmm. uh, gay. But uh, because there's, it, it's it's a, it's a different challenge uh, sure. coming up, and and we're all at different points in our life. And even in a really progressive and accepting city, accepting city like Chicago, it still can be really tough for people to come out, yes. especially if they feel like it's going to impact their career or the ability to clients. Um, and I've, I've experienced that, but I, you, you, you get over it, you get around it. And fortunately, people are changing, especially in Chicago, so it's mm -hmm. helped a lot. But I've been involved in national organizations like Lambda Legal. I've, I've been a leader there for a long time in different parts of it. Um, just a lot, of, a lot of different things. Equality Illinois, I was on the board, the, the PAC board there for a while. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. And thank you for what you do in that yes. area, too, because I think it is important, as you mentioned. Um, you know, one of the things I always uh, stress to particularly, you know, young lawyers and law students is about balance. You have to have balance in life. And even though you're a very busy uh, practitioner, a very busy bar leader uh, and a community leader, uh, you also find time to spend with your family. Yeah. Uh, so, and you, you are a proud father, right? I am. I am yeah. I'm, I'm married. I've been married to Johnny. We've been together for 21 years, 20 years. This, uh, December. Uh, so you're coming up on 30. Yeah, well, no. Yeah, really, no. <laughs> We've been married since 2010, which, and we got married in Connecticut okay. before we could get married here. Um, and uh, we have twin daughters who are 14, uh, Grace and Addie. Uh, they're both freshmen in high school in Chicago Public Schools. Um, and they're both competitive swimmers. Right. Um, and they are, are um, wonderful kids 98% of the time. 2% of the time, uh, I will just say again, they're 14 year old teenage daughters. Right. That's. That's where we are right now. Right. And, we'll and, and, my, and my husband, Johnny, has gone from jet black hair to pretty gray <laughs> hair in the last two years. And one thing I have to let our viewers know, what I always find commendable is that when we talk, you know, you might stop in at an event, but then you're going off to, to a meet or yeah. to one of their games. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, uh, I just want, uh, you know, our viewers to know that you are a prime example of, you know, what we should do yeah. in the legal profession in terms of doing our work, Giving back to the legal community and, and to the and to the community at large, but yet still being able to be, you know, a responsible parent and a family member. Thank you. Know? you. I, I appreciate that. And I got a really quick, 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 quick aside is that one of the managing one of the senior partners in my firm years ago, uh, I'd always see him running off for meetings to go to this, that, and I'm like, Where are you going? And he'd say, Going to my kids got a game Friday night. I'm like, Oh, championships, so you must be leaving. He's like, No, it's a game. He's like, what are we doing all this for if, if you're not right. going to break away to see that? Right. Absolutely. Which is right. Yeah, it was really Absolutely. good advice. And he gave, that's the culture in my firm that I love because it gave those of us that are junior to him yeah. permission. It showed us that's the right way to do it. Right. So, And I love that. Yeah. No, and it's, it's totally uh, true because, um, you know, you get to the mountaintop, but, you know, if you've just been focused on work and nothing else, who are you going to share it with? I agree. Yeah, you know? I agree. Well, you're always... With your family, so yeah, I get that. I get yeah. that. You're, you're, you're a very proud father. Yeah, thank that, you that shines much. through. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Well, it, it has definitely been a pleasure to to have you here. Um, so, CBA president, what's next? Um, it's a really good question. Uh, I've I've been fortunate enough recently to be appointed to a few different things, including a, I'm on the. Illinois Lawyers uh, Trust Fund right okay. now. And we had our first meeting last night, so that's cool. Um, just doing, just kind of 
taking a breather, uh, focusing on work and my family. And again, my kids, you know, they're they're older and I don't want to miss much. You don't so want to miss out. I'm trying to, I'm still trying to, to integrate everything to make it work. Yeah. Well, it's a pleasure having you here, Ray. Um, and again, uh, thank you all for uh, watching us. Um, and uh, we'll be back next month with another prominent leader in the legal profession. And uh, this has been the Diversity Scholarship Foundation's Profiles in the Law. We hope that you've enjoyed this segment. And I have been your host, uh, Justice Jesse Reyes, uh, president of the uh, Diversity Scholarship Foundation.